What's up gearheads? We're out here at Mining Ridge Armory again today to bring you another quality review. Today we're going to be talking about the Shield SMS2. So stick around. All right, the guys at Shield were kind enough to send us a, an early production unit of the, the Shield SMS2 before it went prime time and went live out to the public for everybody to purchase in hopes that we could get this review out there so that you, the consumer, could take a look at what we went through and get a good look at the optic before making your decision on whether or not to purchase it or not. So your end product mileage is definitely going to vary. The box is going to be different. Um, some of the end specs are going to be different. The publication or the publication and the handouts, the media kit, things like that are going to be different. They're probably going to make some tweaks on the actual optic, optic itself. But I think they're pretty close to the final product with this one. And so we want to do a walkthrough. So the first thing let's do, let's do a quick unboxing, kind of show you what came in the box for us. Not necessarily what's going to come in the box for you, but it'll give you a general idea. All right, so let's see what we've got in the box. Pop it open, see what's in there, and go through some of the, the specs on, on the Shield SMS Shield Mini 2.0. SMS 2 Shield Mini Sight 2.0. You see they got a lifetime warranty there. You've got some ISO 9001 information on the side there from the company, from Shield. Uh, this, I don't think, is their final product for a box because they sent me one of the earlier models to review and they said that they were going to be changing and putting some stickers, different stickers on the outside of the box, that there's going to be a red uh, red sticker that indicates whether you have a, the polymer or the, uh, uh, the glass screen, that kind of, uh, that kind of thing. Um, so this probably isn't the final product, so just bear with me as we do this. But at any rate, the box itself is kind of a kind of like a, a, a harder, a harder, thin plastic, very flexible. Inside the lid, you can see you've got your standard instructions, uh, and then there's pictures on the back side for how to do some of the uh, some of the windage and elevation. But that that's it. There's no there's no instructions for. Um, no instructions for how to how to operate it or put it or um, up and down or battery information or anything. So I'm assuming you know as we talk through the specs, that's going to be because this is an automatic adjustment that it automatically adjusts to ambient light around it in the room with all the different settings, um, and and just kind of does it automatically. And that there's nothing you can do manually up or down. So that that may actually be a sticking point for some people who prefer to have both the automatic adjustment and the ability to dial it up or down based on situation or mission specific. So that could be a big deal. It could not, but you know, I, I did notice immediately that in the instructions that was absent and it's because this thing is an automatic adjust. So inside the box, we have a hex key, a standard. Oh, that's cute. They got a sticker on the back. It's interesting on the back of the battery. Good for them. A standard CR2032 3 volt lithium ion battery. I like how they got the sticker on the back of it. That's a nice touch. I didn't do that. Um, you've got four mounting screws that are Allen or hex head. Okay. In there. You have the bottom plate. Now that, that actually matters. So once you put this thing together, you do have to snap that bottom plate on. To, to cover the bottom, otherwise the, the bottom of it will be open facing down towards the slide of your pistol. The optic itself, there we go, there's your Shield SMS2. Check that out. It's your inside battery compartment. Now I did notice, like I mentioned, you know, there's no gasket material here. So if you mounted this directly to a slide, I'm not sure whether it would get the necessary contacts. I would imagine so, because based on that sticker being on there, I would imagine that that means that any kind of connection except for metal, solid metal, which may drain the battery possibly, would cause it to, to get a good connection and work. But there's noticeably no gasket present there. Nothing. So, and again, there's verbiage in there. It says battery C, CR2032 is what goes in it. There it is, the SMS2. Thing is tiny and lightweight. My goodness. So as we're putting it together, 
A um, couple things in the, the documentation for it is that it is a red light emitting LED, no laser, completely eye safe with no radioactive materials. Uh, the dots do come in the different versions. They have a, uh, according to their, to their promotional material, they have a 3.25 MOA and a 6.25 MOA dot. Um, I did notice in their promotional material some smaller dots, like a, a, a 1 or 1.5 or something like that. Um, I, I don't have that one, so I don't know, you know what the story is on that. Um, I just slipped the battery in, by the way, and see if we can get us a shot of the, the dot there. Uh, we can get some in there. There you go. So we've already got her up and running. And based on that, looks like it's probably about a 6 MOA dot. No, no, I'll take that back. That's that's probably a 3, three or 3.5 MOA dot. Okay. Here's what that's going to look like once it's all said and done. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put the bottom plate on that now as we talk. So there I notice there's a little little point right there where it wouldn't hurt to probably do a little quality control and shave off some of that plastic there. I may come back later and put a um, put an exacto knife to it. So you can hear a good audible click as the bottom goes on. Hopefully that's going to provide some level of water and, and impact resistance. We'll see how that plays out. Uh, but anyways, back to what I was saying about the uh, about some of the specs and information in the promotional material. So there's zero magnification. Uh, there's very very low parallax polymer with a SI02 quartz coating or a glass option. So that's what they're talking about on the actual glass itself inside the viewing area. You've got two options. They'll either come with the, the quartz coating or the glass option. And again, they, they mentioned that that's going to be on the box. You'll have a, a label indicating which one you have and which one you're purchasing. So according to what you're looking to get, that's, you know, that's something that might be relevant to you. There is an anti-reflection coating, uh, not a color coating, although they did mention to me in their documentation that you can tell a slight difference by looking at the tinge of the glass as to which, which model you have. Um, but there's no official actual color coating, you know, like you've got the RMR, you'll get that, that definitive orange -ish, and you can see with this one, see if I can get to focus real good and see how clear you can get that thing. There is no tint, no anything. That is just about as clear as you could possibly get it. Um, which is good. That's what you would want in an optic like that. Um, it says that the battery life with the CR2032 is roughly, uh, one to two years with an, uh, uh, for average use up to three years with dark storage. So obviously, you know, using it in and out, um, they're, they're indicating by the, the, the publication that a good lithium 2032 is going to be, give you over a year's worth of use. Now, obviously I'm not going to have time to test that before I publish this review. So your mileage may vary on that one. Good luck. You know, uh, just let us know, comment below, you know, let us know if you, if you've ran this and it's a year or two from now and you're watching this video and you've had a battery and you've been running it, you know, we, we may follow back up and see. Um, obviously we mentioned that the brightness adjustments is fast and automatic. So I'm going to be testing that and hopefully I can capture some footage of it. But at the very least, I'll give you my opinion. So <clears throat> I've got a couple of lamps pointed straight at it. Then I've got an overhead light going on and then we got some pitch darkness. So we're going to see the different auto auto intensities for the red dot. So the overhead light. Now we're going to turn off lamp number one. Lamp number two. And after lamp number three, it'll be pitch dark. There's a little waver there because of the, uh, the angle of the camera. So, but you can kind of get an idea there of how bright it is in the dark. Now I'm going to turn on a lamp pointed down and away. Get a low light. More of a low light sample. Maybe a Walmart parking lot or a public parking lot, something like that. A little bit of shadow, different intensities and in the way that it changes according to the way the light adjusts from positionings. Hopefully that gives you some idea of the auto adjust for the red dot. 
and how it looks as it goes through the different ranges and intensities of light. Now, the brightness range is compatible, the lowest brightness range setting as it dials itself down is compatible with night vision. So now since you can't manually adjust it anywhere on here other than the windage and elevation, my only assumption is that they've designed this thing it, with, the, with the thought in mind of if it's in a low light condition to where, low enough to where you'd be using uh, NV, that this is gonna be compatible with it by default. And again, the housing material is a glass nylon polymer composite. Uh, it comes, it's matte black, so that there's not a, there's no glint or glare off of it. It won't catch the light and, and give away your, um, give away, necessarily give away position. Uh, the dimensions uh, are, four point, are 42 by 25 by 23 millimeters or 1.7 by 1.0 by 0.9 inches. It comes in like at 10.95 grams or 0.38 ounces. Uh, with, that's without the battery. With the battery, it's 13.8 uh, grams or 0.48 ounces. And I can tell you right now, man, that thing is, it is almost like, like I'm not even feeling it at all. Um, I'm gonna be mounting it on my Janik TP9 SC, uh, my Elite SC, okay? Let's see if I can get this camera to focus down here. Eh, it doesn't matter. Um, but so that brings up the subject of, of the mount and the plate and what it's gonna fit on. So just like its predecessors in the shield line, this, this optic is gonna mount on any standard, any standard uh, loophole DPP shield or J point pattern. Uh, as you can see from a Janik perspective, if you've got the Elite or the SFX uh, or any of those, it mounts right on up to plate number four. Right, one other thing that's in the box that comes with it is a mini dial. Um, you're, a, you're able to thread your, your hex wrench that comes with it through the mini dial, and it, it's supposed to help you in dialing it in, windage and elevation. Uh, you move the dot to the point of impact. It's got one, one div over here on the left. And then over here, you got a quarter inch at 20 yards and 0.5 millimeters at 20 meters. Dot up, group down, dot right, group left. So I will use that whenever I'm going through dialing it in. Okay, so I went and got the box that the Janik SC came in. And there is a small adapter plate in there right here. For those of you who own one, it's this little plate right here. I'm gonna see if that makes a difference because my concern is if I just mount this thing directly to, even, and, and I'm not Loctiting it, that it's gonna have a little wiggle and that I'm gonna have some problems with accuracy and I wouldn't be giving you guys, that's not fair. I wouldn't be giving you all a fair assessment. So I'm gonna put this mounting plate on here, this little adapter plate, this little plastic adapter plate. Now, the flip side to that is I didn't want to do that because that does add you know, an extra millimeter or two and I was trying to avoid that, but I'm not gonna be able to. If uh, you're, you know, this, this thing has the, the standard shield pattern, uh, and it, it's the same as its predecessors, the original SMS and, and all the other shield optics. Um, if by chance your particular firearm, it doesn't just fit it natively like it's gonna fit this Janik SC natively, um, you can always go, and there's about 54, 53 or 54 current adapter plates on the shield website right now that you can order and find, you know, find your particular model of firearm and order what you need for what you're doing. Oh yeah, yeah, that lined up better. So I'm not going to use the, the Allen screws that came with the shield. I'm gonna use the accessories goodies box that came with my SC instead. Right, like I said, I'm not using blue Loctite, so I'm gonna to torque it down pretty good. Pretty good, but not, not enough to strip the threads out and not enough to wear, I can't remove it again. Now later on, if I decide that this thing's gonna live on this thing permanently, you know, maybe we can, maybe we can talk. But for right now, I'm just gonna tweak it down just a wee bit and I'm gonna keep an eye on it and, and keep tightening it up over time. I don't know if I can get this on camera or not, but I'm gonna try. So when you get the dot in the center of the glass, or even if you're not getting the dot in the center, let's, let's just take that out of the equation. You're gonna be, let's see if I can get that on camera or not. The front sight post 
is just below. If you line the top of this front sight post up with the top of the rear sight post, the rear notch, you can see that the, the body here slightly obstructs the dot, okay? But if you can see the back of the shield body, and that's the, the out of the box iron sights that came with the SC. I haven't changed those out yet. Side note, there is a cutout, a notch cutout in the rear of the shield here, right there that I would imagine is not going to line up as well as the native sites, but I would imagine that in a pinch that could be used, that notch that's inside the shield there could be used with your front sight post as to give you an iron sight view or an iron sight setting. All right, we're going to try to zero this thing in, just see if we can get it kind of in the ballpark. I've got a couple pieces of paper, eight and a half by 11, just average letter size paper out at about 20 yards, uh, just around 20 yards. We're gonna be using some uh, Fiocchi, 115 grain, full metal jacket, 1200 feet per second, to just just basically trying to get this thing roughly zeroed in. I'm not trying to make this all science-y. Um, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll do more science-y dialing in once I get it down and start doing some real good running with it. So I did wanna point out one thing that I failed to point out in the unboxing portion um, I had mentioned that, that the box came with one hex wrench uh, and that you slid that hex wrench through the mini dial, the mini, the mini, um, the mini dial for adjusting for adjustments, windage and elevation adjustment. But I, I failed to mention and failed to notice there's actually a much, much smaller hex wrench in there as well, an Allen wrench that literally goes through it. So there's two Allen wrenches in the box when you go to do your, your unboxing. Be sure you don't lose that. Be sure you notice it. It's, it's parallel to the larger one but it's kind of sunk down in the, the foam just a little bit. And again, your, your packaging in your box is gonna be probably significantly different. It's gonna be cardboard uh, instead of the plastic like mine for the final product, but regardless. So I can already tell you right out of the gates a couple things um, when, for, when I go to zero this thing in. One of them is that, you know, that mini dial kind of made me chuckle a little bit when I saw it and I didn't think I was gonna use it. I thought it was gonna be, you know, uh, BS, just to be frank with you, um, but it's not. You, you actually do need it and it is gonna be helpful. I can already tell this because I did a dry run inside of the house using a, a laser bore cider out of the end of it uh, and you know reached out across about you know, 75 feet, 60, 65 feet. Uh, and forgive the, the wind noise here if there's a lot of that, I do forgive me. Um, and, I, and I noticed immediately that there is no verbiage, there's no markings on the housing of the, the Shield SMS2 uh, that tells you up, down, left, right, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So all of that verbiage and markings are on your little mini dial that comes with it. So I can already tell you that's in one way that's a negative, all right? I can tell you that that's a negative because of the fact that if you're in the field and you need to make, to make emergency adjustments for whatever reason, if you're using this in a, um, a, a heavier duty operator ninja tactical kind of way, you, you are going to have to just know, you know, clockwise, counterclockwise for up, down, clockwise, counterclockwise for windage left, right. Um, and, and that's kind of a disadvantage, right? So you have to have this dial. Now that said, this dial is actually pretty intuitive. So when you read it, one division equals a quarter inch at 20 yards. So, and if you want the dot to go up and move your group down, then you're going to go counterclockwise right and if you want to move the dot if you want to move the dot right and move your grouping left quarter inch at per 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 interval again counterclockwise and so that's pretty much what the move the dot to the point of impact on this mini dial is i can also tell you another side point is as i was turning the windage and the elevation there is no audible click for each interval okay no audible click for each interval. Now, the final product may vary and may be different for you out there in Utube's land, but mine, there was no click. So every turn I was making, I was having to kind of gauge it and feel it. Another thing to note is the instructions made it very clear that if you're, if you're having any resistance whatsoever, don't force this thing, don't force it. But I experienced resistance on both the windage and the, the uh, elevation. Uh, adjustment screws, the hex screws. So I kind of gave it a little torque. Um, it did 
call i mean it was i mean it was to the point that that the hex wrench which is a tiny hex wrench right so you know this is all relative that based on the physics of it, it the the hex wrench felt like it was going to start to bend and yield a little bit before it would move before it would kind of break and move you know um, so I don't know if that's a, uh, a design. I don't know if it's because it's so tight and fresh and new. I don't know if it's Loctite. I don't know if it's the mechanism inside of it. I have no idea. I'm just telling you my experience so that you know what to expect out there in Utube's land. Uh, so be aware, there's no audible click. So I'm not sure how these divisions are going to work as far as the quarter inch and me being able to, to, to get it done. I'm going to kind of feel my way through it. Again, I have laser bore sided this already ahead of time. So it's I'm hoping it's going to be relatively close, and I don't waste a whole lot of ammo here. But you know what? Let's just uh, let's just shut up and shoot. Shut up and shoot. And again, I'm shooting dry here too. I haven't uh, haven't practiced any or warmed up any today, so I could be way off. We'll see how this plays out. I'm going to one eye this so that I can get it lined up as quote unquote perfectly as I can. I'm going to do three shot strings. And then we're going to go check our results. So stay tuned. All right, that didn't take long. I was able to get that thing zeroed in pretty quick. Uh, where I had it laser bore sighted it initially, it was, it was pretty close out at 20 yards anyways. So now it's just a matter of kind of fine tuning it. Uh, I will, I will tell you this, um, good, bad, love it, hate it, indifferent, doesn't matter. Um, I bottomed out on, on the up, down, on the elevation, I bottomed out. Now, is that the optic? Probably not. That's probably this particular optic combined with the Janik TP9 Elite SC specifically. Um, because of the fact that it sits so low down into the, into the uh, slide, uh, which is a good thing because it gets it lower over the barrel axis um, as I was going down um, to pull to pull my dot down to pull my shot groups down uh, which means that I was dialing the uh, yeah dialing it upwards I was dialing it counterclockwise uh, as I, I dialed it uh, literally as far as it would go till it bottomed out uh, or at least I assume it bottomed out again as I mentioned a, a moment ago it, it did get a little stiff when I was trying to adjust it so I was scared to twist it any harder um, but it bottomed out and it's it's now zeroed in though so let's see still a play in here steel i know you can't hear that steel but i just run one out at 25 one out at about 15. i missed the 50. it's about three inch barrel though so let's be honest let's give a little credit to that and I missed it again, so I'm going to stop wasting bullets on that. Let's go back to my paper targets here. You know what? That paper's just not as much fun as some steel. Gonna change up and go down here and shoot a little steel. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's a lot of fun. That's pretty much dead on. That is scary accurate, people. I'm pushing. It is not the optic. That is me purely. Oh my God, I am tearing, I am keyholing that thing. Again, I'm only about 15, 15 feet out. I'm sorry, about five yards. That's about 15 feet. Man, 
I might splice in a video of that. That's impressive. Okay, so again, I'm only, you know, I'm only five yards out, so I'm not like dead on top of this thing uh, by any stretch of imagination. I'm also not seven yards or, or on out. Uh, I'm within the 21 feet where most defensive shootings occur or whatever, statistically speaking. Dude, I'm keeping a group. Besides the one I pushed, I'm keeping every one of those. For those of you who are familiar with an eight and a half by 11 printout of a, of a uh, dot, dot torture test, I am holding a solid. Every single one of those is in or is touching the black, is in, and there's only one actually touching the black kind of down low, and that was me pushing, that was me, that wasn't this dot, that is amazing. So I'm not moving this thing at all. It is right where it's at, and we're gonna, we're gonna keep it like that. All right, I'm gonna reload up, and I'm gonna try something else, because uh, there's something else I need to know before I start carrying this thing. So hang on a second. Okay, so one other thing I wanted to test, you know, got the thing zeroed in, I've already put probably, at this point I've probably put at least 200 rounds through it, at least. Um, with the optic. I've carried it kind of, sort of, and what I mean by that is I've not made it my primary concealed carry just yet. I've actually just been uh, kind of carrying it around the house and around the neighborhood and that kind of thing. So I've kind of got a good feel for it. Uh, I don't have a good holster for its reason. I haven't started yet, and plus it hasn't proven itself to me. But uh, just to be clear, there's, uh, there's one test that, you know, I was talking to the guys at Shield about, and uh, they're, they're still um, working on what they're going to do as far as like a drop and water test. So you know, I, I, they haven't given me the results just yet, right? So I, I don't know what their official drop and test results are and how these things will hold up, right? But, you know, if I'm gonna carry a gun, it has to have the ability to hold zero and to work really well. You know, it needs to be able to survive a drop test. So I will trust their metrics. I promise I will as soon as they come out. But as of the time I spoke to them, you know, it hadn't, they hadn't actually done that testing just yet, or, or at the very least, you know, they, they hadn't published it, right? So, you know, I'm going to have to, I know all of you out there in YouTube are just going absolutely insane and losing your minds over this. Trigger alert! Okay, guys, listen, let's be adults here. I will not, will not trust my life to anything if I don't know its limitations. There's all, you're already introducing a, a, an additional mechanical element for your eyes to have to process, you know, for you to have to learn a learning curve. You're already introducing a, an additional failure point to your firearm by adding a red dot or an optic to it instead of your standard iron sights. So I wanna know where its failure and breakpoints are and what I can and cannot trust if I'm gonna trust my life and the lives of my family to I it. I still see the red in there, so the beam is holding. I still see the dot. Okay, so let's see if I dropped it in the middle of public, uh, which to be fair, this, this grounds is hard. You know, I live in a mountainous area in the foothills and there is a naturally occurring uh, obelisk or stone, or stone mountain near me and it runs underneath where I'm at. So this is a very hard, compacted clay substrate. It's not concrete though, I mean, it's not a parking lot or whatever. So, I mean, we may actually do a test on that up there in my driveway. Um, so, but we're gonna see if it held zero. Uh, now, again, granted, that wasn't a comprehensive test. I mean, it dropped it from what, seven, eight feet. I'm five foot nine, you know, I'm holding it up here, but we'll see. Dead on. Dead on. Oh, I pushed. Perfection. It didn't move at all. That is beautiful. I mean, again, 15 feet. So, you know, take that with a grain of salt. I will get a picture of this and I'll try to, to take a permanent marker right on there and show you which one was which, but there wasn't nothing but human error for anything that wasn't perfect on that one at 15 feet. That was all Toby mess ups as opposed to this optic. This optic held dead zero. So, 
you know, that's, uh, that makes me feel a little better about trusting my life to it or my family's life. So I think from all the video footage you've seen and all the things that we've tested and everything I've said about it so far, you can get a pretty good idea of whether I, I did or didn't like this thing and whether I approve of it or not. But I'm going to go ahead and talk through a couple of finer points about pros and cons, some things I may have glazed over or some things I may have left out as I was talking through the video. Um, some of the pros, a couple of the things, and pardon me, I'm looking at my notes off to the side here. Um, a couple of the pros on it for sure are definitely the, the weight, the build quality, the clarity of the glass, the intensity of the, the red dot, its ability for the auto on off, its ability to adjust automatically to the different light intensities around it, environmental light around it, ambient light. The fact that it has that sight notch in the rear that we talked about for target acquisition with your iron sights in case of a backup scenario. The fact that they built this in both polymer and glass for the lens. Glass for those of you who want to get up to a higher end optic, wanting to spend just an extra couple of dollars for slot, slot, and I mean ever so slot. Difference in the clarity between it and the polymer. And polymer for the rest of us who want to keep it in a reasonable price range and also make it a little more tough, a little more resilient for competition shooting, for law enforcement, military applications, that kind of thing. Now that does lead us also into a couple of the negatives and a couple of the cons. Now, and I want to be clear about this first con, about the clarity. When I say clarity of the polymer versus clarity of the glass, you are not going to notice it. It is amazingly and incredibly clear. Um, there is a slight distortion right up against the black housing, uh, right where the, the lens meets the housing itself. But you're literally not going to see it. I mean, it's just, it's, it's not even a thing. It's not even existent. So the difference in clarity is obviously a con, but that's going to be a con with any optic that has a polymer versus glass. Another couple cons is they're aiming and targeting to eventually have an IP67 rating, which, you know, the IP is a uh, ingress protection testing or something like that. Uh, the, the first number uh, indicates uh, particles or dust or, or obstructions or physical physical damage. The second number indicates water submersion. Uh, they're eventually hoping to test this thing out in, at an IP67 rating, which would indicate, you know, particles and dust, you know, up to whatever, and then water submersion. Uh, before they do that, though, they have to start coating some of the internal parts. Because as I showed you on the, the unboxing portion of it, there's no rubber gasket that protects the bottom part of it you know, where the battery compartment is from, from the lower half of the, of the optic and then from the firearm itself. So theoretically, if you immerse this for a minute, uh, which the 7 rating, I believe, is 1 meter, 1.5 meters for 30 minutes, 1 meter, 3.3 feet, something like that. Um, it, right now, I, I have no doubt, I didn't test it, but I have no doubt that this would probably waterlog and it would shut down. Um, they are planning on, so again, your end product may be different, and it may actually have that IP rating written on the box. Keep an eye out for that. Um, but as of right now, as of this optic right here that I am testing, not the final product, because again, to be fair, they are planning on putting a conformal coating on all of the internal parts, which will give it that waterproof and water, uh, water resistance capability. But for right now, with the optic I have in hand, with what I'm having to review, I have to list that as a con. You know, I don't know how that's long-term going to hold up to uh, my, my body perspiration, um, moisture in the air in the, in the summer months, uh, the, the possibility that I get caught out in the rain in a, in a shooting situation where I'm having to use it, I just don't know. Another negative, and, and this isn't just, you know, indicative of the Shield SMS 2 or any other firearm really, there's a ton of firearms that have this complaint for me and it's a con, is the battery, right? The battery, in order for them to keep the, the form factor extremely small and the weight down, they had to put that battery up underneath. Now, I have taken it on and off multiple times and it has consistently held zero. Even through me taking it off and putting it back on, taking it off and putting it back on. Side note of a pro for that is, as I mentioned in the unboxing portion, I like the fact, the little touch that they gave you of a sticker for the battery to, to give it, you know, if you've got that metal contact up underneath, it gives it uh, an extra layer of protection to keep it from oxidizing uh, and giving you those kinds of issues. So that's a pro and a con. But the con is definitely that the battery compartment's on the underside. So, bottom line, um, 
would I buy this optic? Would I trust my life to it? That's the bottom line. Would I buy this optic with my own money if I were given the choice to do so? Yes, absolutely. It is a purpose-built, purpose-driven, specific intent micro optic. What I mean by that is you would be purchasing it for a specific intent. So for example, one of the reasons I chose the Janik TP9 Elite SC to run this on is because the slide has a cutout for a micro red dot, not just a, a standard pistol red dot like the Vortex Venom and the Vortex Viper, the larger lines. This is for a micro. So I had that specific intent of bringing the overall size of the firearm down, making it match the width of the slide and the, the geometry of the way that the cutout is put into the slide. It was a specific built, specific intent. Um, specifically, I'll be using it for competition shooting, standard average everyday concealed carry. Will not be using it for law enforcement or military applications. Um, yeah, I'll probably take some courses of fire that, that mimic law enforcement and military tactics and techniques with it, but, and I have no concern about doing that whatsoever. Um, but I would imagine that, you know, be beating and banging it and racking it off of my, um, belt enough times. Eventually I'm going to knock some scratches and knock some, <laughs> knock some dents in the red dot. Um, but overall, absolutely. I would buy it with my money. Absolutely. And again, it's a purpose built, you know, so you're buying it for a specific purpose. Would I trust my life and the lives of my family to it? Yes and no. Yes. I would trust it just as much as I would trust any other red dot optic with the exception of the super high end, extremely expensive ones. Obviously those are in a category all of themselves. Uh, but in your standard average consumer grade red dot optics that mount on the top of a pistol, Absolutely. I would trust this just as much as I would trust the next one as I would trust the next one as I would trust the next one. It has given me no indications of failures through the hundreds and hundreds of rounds I've put through it so far. It has been given me no indications of issues that are not standard. It's given me no indications of an anomaly. You know, it, does it have the same flowering when you get the, the, op, the red dot wet compared to other optics? Absolutely. Does it have the same potential for battery uh, longevity or battery failure in the middle of a firefight? Absolutely. Uh, but on the bright side, they've compensated for some of that stuff by the fact that, like I mentioned, they've got that notch. Again, back to the notch and being able to co-witness with your front iron sight in, 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 uh, in the event of a full-blown full failure, mechanical failure. So yes, I would trust this red dot to, to, with my life and with my family's lives, just as much as I would trust any other red dot. The no portion of it, though, would be any red dot a has to be proven through time, and I've got several hundred rounds through this, but I've not consistently carried it and beat it. I have carried it quite a bit, but I've not consistently carried it and beat it for a length of time that I would consider fully, fully resolved. So six, eight months, 10 months, that kind of thing. I haven't done that just yet. Um, so in fairness, you know, I have to give it a, a yes and a no to say I want it to prove itself and I will put this into my rotation. I will be carrying it. I will be abusing it. I will be giving it that run for its money. But right out of the gates, would I trust it today to my life and to my family's life? Absolutely. Sure. So overall, hopefully this information has been useful for some of you out there who's looking to purchase the Shield SMS2 or thinking about purchasing it for whatever purpose you have for it. Hopefully I've not rambled on too much and I've given you some good stuff. Until we see you out on the range again, you keep living your dream.